pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We've got everybody here but Sarah tonight, so we have the quorum. Um, anybody see any changes on the regular agenda? Has it changed since it was pushed? If not, accept the motion to accept the agenda as is. Okay, Jeff makes a motion. Can I get a second? Second. Naomi does a second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Cons consent agenda. What's that? You hit the push button and do the come on. Should have a green light on. Oh, that yeah. one probably has a broken LED on it. Oh, okay. So it's it's pushed to mute on me, so. It's good? Otherwise, yep. it's live. You're okay. good. You okay. should be good. All right. Just making sure. <coughs> okay, consent agenda. Anybody got any changes, questions on any of that? I'll ask Brett ahead of time on my questions. <coughs> okay. I did too. <coughs> All right, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. <coughs> okay. Naomi I'll second. Motion. Stephanie does a second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Approval of the City Council special meeting minutes from July 12th. Any changes, corrections on that? No. no. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Stephanie makes a motion. Can I get a second? Second. And we does a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. The approval of the City Council meeting minutes from July 17th. Any changes, corrections on that? I'm going to look for a motion to accept. Make motion. Okay, Jeff makes the motion. Can I get a second? I'll second. Stephanie is a second. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. And then we have the approval of the City Council special minute, minutes, meeting minutes, yeah, I can say that, on July 28th. <coughs> Any changes or corrections to that? No, I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay, and does a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, public comment. Anybody got anything you want to chit chat about tonight? Yeah. Okay, Jack, go ahead, go ahead up and introduce yourself. Uh, Jack Dwyer, um, owner's representative for the Sparks, Lee and Nancy, Nancy Sparks. Um, I didn't know if this was the public comment for uh, the Visto subdivision, or we, are we doing that later? Later. It would be later. It would be later, so I mean, okay. we want to wait. We the public hearing. I'll, I'll address the, the council at the, okay. when that uh, was brought up. Agenda okay. 12. Okay. Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay, anybody else? My name is Lynette Weber. I live in County 14 and County 17. Um, my first comment is a little disappointed in the fact of the notification of our service date change on our garbage. Um, still, three fourths of the residents I don't think know that that change happened. Um, we get a monthly bill, it's not on a monthly bill. Um, and with a change like that, I would think that we get notification either from uh, waste management or the city. I don't think just putting on website is uh, something that's really notifying the residents because three-fourths of them still don't have their garbage can out on the right day and so they put it out the night before on our end and they blow over and we have garbage all over the place so request that notification actually in writing possibly goes to those residents and on that I would think that you'd have a 30-day notice on a utility change like that rather than what was it a week maybe I'm sure there was talk about that by far longer than just a week. 
it was when the garbage guys came out and they're the ones who was going to notify on that right i mean they were supposed to notify everybody do we not have a contract we, though we requested a approximately a month notification time yeah. uh we pushed them over and over to do notices once we had the information we kicked it out uh i believe in horse happenings we had some information about it there and then the city's website and facebook uh, we asked the, the waste management to put it out um, flyers and have their own ledger about it. Um, my understanding is that they were to put it on the garbage cans for individuals, and we've had mixed results of that. Uh, but we have been pushing them over and over. They also had to delay the go live of it from what they were originally doing, and that was their challenges they had at waste management. So. Um, mm -hmm. We, we kept pushing for longer notice so we did keep pushing for it and uh, if people are not getting their trash picked up do that uh, communication challenge then we just ask that they let us know and then we'll ask waste management to be out there picking up trash until they get resolved and if they have to go out there more until they get the days corrected with individuals then that's what we have to do is it possible to send a letter to the residents or put it in the utility bill? I believe, did we, Matt, did we have it in the utility bill? I don't recall if we did no. or not off top of my head, so. Can we just no. add it? We could add it into the yeah. utility bill. Let's do that. Add a reminder. And the second item, I was here about a month ago talking about Maple Lakes and the drainage of the pond. We've been draining, it's been backfilling in our ditch again. I asked them to stop today again. Three inches should not warrant that we continue to drain that pond. There's no streets that are flooding in Maple Lakes. The only thing that was going to the drain today was Thompson Homes watering their lawns and their homes that no one's living in. There's no reason that should be backfilling our ditch. I've been working with the county. The county's about one to two weeks out to try doing some cleaning in those ditches. But again, a lot of those ditches haven't been mowed. And as the individual at City Hall told me today, it's a county ditch. We don't have to mow it. Make it sure a lot easier for water to drain and for them to do the work. City mowed around the pond, but did not mow their ditch. The section over by the industrial park, the Visto addition, none of that ditch is mowed yet. So Lucas, is it a county ditch? Do we have to mow it? Because if that's the case, then I'll quit mowing my ditch. It's our jurisdiction, they can mow it whenever they mow their ditches. I don't know which is this on 100th? We had 100th and 14th. And 14th. 14th mm -hmm. and 17th. Yeah, so the city's not obligated to mow it. So our residents, since it's county ditch, or do we have to mow it? I don't know when the county mows their ditches. Yeah. Good to know. Just want to make sure that was legally what was the thing was, that we didn't have to mow it. Okay. I ask that you, re I request that you quit draining that pond. So that then ditches can dry out. The county should be out in a week or two, please. Okay. Thank you, Lynette. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Anyone else? Okay. Then we'll move along. Sheriff's report. That will be next time. Uh, all right, Jim, you got 10. All right, Mr. Mayor and Council. So what we have first is uh, Water Sewer Storm and Street Improvement District 2021-5, area with third edition. Um, this project had a storm sewer pond and then a discharge piping that ran out along Southwood Drive to Most into the Old River Oxbow for drainage. Uh, there was an encroachment at um, the address shown here, 199 Southwood Drive, of some planter boxes and uh, uh, railroad ties in the, in the right of way. Those were removed and, uh, or I guess, taken out completely and um, with little, little notice to the residents so that that is unfortunate but um so that was taken out in the city right away storm sewer was installed through there so um joel reached out to the people that live at 199 southwood they provided an estimate for replacing the um, plantings and all that uh, it was a little over seven thousand dollars we reviewed the um reviewed the uh the estimate and came up with $2,000 for the plantings themselves, for the, the plants. And the residents have come back requesting an, basically another $1,020 for additional dirt and installation, making them, I think they're requesting around uh, $3,000, if I can 
find it here. So they, uh, like from they would request request a rounded reimbursement of three thousand dollars. So Jim, are they going to be able to replace what got torn up, or do they have to do uh, a different configuration? Today, if you guys want to address that. Yeah, go ahead. I just, I'm just curious what they're going or what yeah, the plan is. Um, it's been helping out with this project. So, um, like you said, that there was very little notification given at all. Um, my parents actually found out the day before from the contractors that just showed up with all the equipment. Um, so there was no notification at all. So we weren't able to remove those plants and transplant them around the house. Um, with that being said, we we understand that the, that the primary landscaping was an encroachment on the city's property. Um, so that's why we're just requesting the three thousand dollars in reimbursement for just the plants themselves. Okay. So the city, because you, if you had had opportunity and notice, you would have tried to salvage the plants. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, there's been over the years, there's been a lot of time and effort put into that I landscaping. Told, so I, I totally get that. They gave us uh, one day note. He came. He actually came to the house um, the night before they started digging, and it was like almost <coughs> four o'clock in the afternoon. And he said, "We're going to start digging," and that was, I think, on the second of May. And they started uh, seven o'clock in the morning on the third, and we didn't have any any chance to even get out there and dig anything up. They just took the next morning. They were out there at seven o'clock, and they they took all the railroad ties, everything. And I was like, just dug it up. Yeah. Jim, Jim, who was the contractor on that? Uh, one? Master Construction. Okay. So uh, this isn't atypical. We've done this for Maple Lake Estates. There were two properties down there that had some uh, plantings. One was some dogwoods that the city reimbursed through the project, and the other one was um, <coughs> to the south. There was some compost that was spread uh, at the same time. So the, that went through the project costs. So. so this would get added on? This would be included in the contingencies on the Arrowwood Third Project. Okay. Okay. Anything else, sir? Uh, I have pictures of some things if you wanted to see them. If not, that's fine. Um, you guys I have see pictures them. of the plants, some of the plants that were in there, as well as them putting a big moat around our whole front yard. Where I had to, I had to take a Friday off of work so I could actually leave the house mm -hmm. because. That's when the sewer backed up because of the pipes broke. Separate issue. That's so what, separate what kind of plants did you guys have on there? Um, we have them on the... Yep. So there are installation, uh, there's yeah, a, there's let's see, six hostas, three daylilies, two okay. iris, two mum, 12 counties, two dog, and two doglets. And then the installation of those plantings was what it was. So. Um, like I said, the flowers listed in the estimate worked out to about $1,958. An additional dirt and installation was $1,020. And the email that I was forwarded said that the, the Velaroods were requesting a rounded reimbursement of $3,000 for, for that. Okay. Anybody have any other questions on that? That's not just for the plant, that's for the soil as well. Yep. And you said the. Uh, <coughs> Project does have the contingency in there to support it. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Jeff, you want to? Okay. 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 Uh, any other questions? Okay. Um, Jim, I don't know what you. I don't think I've said them or heard of this one before where they've done that or it's such short notice. So I'm kind no, of surprised. Thank you. Thank you. Not. Not right, not good. Yeah, yeah. so that's no, what I'm thinking. Can. I think we can probably pick this one up and get it done. And then maybe have a little talk with Master Construction. On yeah, and, and the developer too. We were told that the developer had kind of notified all those people along that route of what's coming yeah. and that we're finding out that wasn't the truth. So okay. Yeah, that's something. We there's should. some notification that needs to be improved. Right. On that. Actually, Master Construction was the one that came and notified us the night before. So we hadn't had nothing. He asked me if the city had came over, and I said no. I had no idea, and he said, "Okay, well, I'm just gonna let you know if you don't flip out on me tomorrow, everything's coming up." So. Okay, but tonight before is still not enough. No, no, it isn't. So, um, what do you guys think? Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, does somebody make a proposal, and it will 
What did you, how much was it, Jim? $3,000. 3000 right. yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the $3,000, what do you want me to call it? Planting restoration. Planting restoration um, for 199 Southwood Drive oh. residents. Okay. Uh, Naomi makes a motion. Can I get a second? Second. Jeff does a second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, that's everybody. Okay, Jim, let's make it happen. Uh, Jace, you got the next one. All right, so the first one for you tonight is a public hearing for a rezone and plat. Um, the applicant is requesting to resubdivide lot two, block one, and Brinks third subdivision in order to create an approximately 0.23 acre lot. Um, additionally, on top of the plat, the applicant is proposing to rezone the property from its current zoning district of SR to PF. Um, the city's future land use map identifies the site as community focused, and while it's not expressly stated in the comprehensive plan as a compatible district, public facilities has been viewed as such in similar areas and similar developments that have been approved. Um, the proposed use of the site is for an optical transportation network, OTN, and within your packet there are several examples of what those buildings look like. Uh, for mid-continent communications. Um, and again, while OTNs are not for especially permitted in the public facility zoning district for city, or for city code 17.5.16.2, uh, which is other uses and activities not listed, but similar to listed permitted, permitted uses and consistent with the stated purpose of the district are considered permitted. Um, adequate ingress and egress for the site is proposed utilizing an existing approach, approach that is currently used by the <coughs> code of power for access to their existing substations. There is an easement agreement within the packet as well uh, that would allow Midco to utilize that access. Um, and the Planning and Zoning Commission on their July 11th meeting voted 5-0 to approve the plat and rezone uh, as a recommendation to the City Council. The applicant is here this evening as well. Um, if you guys have any questions for me or the applicant, I'm more than happy to answer them. Okay. Well, why don't we open up uh, for the rezone? We'll open up public hearing. We'll do the same thing for the plat. Get them both open up at the same time here. Um, <coughs> anybody have any com questions, concerns, comments on the rezone or the plat for this Midco edition? Okay. I do have a question, Jace. Um, future use on this area right here at that corner um, would we ever want something different there would you ever want to ask Encoda to move that substation and put something different on that corner being that it's going to be one popular intersection it's kind of what I'm getting at what's that transfer station yeah Wait, I mean it's an existing transfer station I guess I mean in a real world or perfect world scenario that transfer station doesn't exist on that corner okay um, however it does at this time so i don't necessarily know how to answer that question per se would i utilize that corner for something different most likely but we also have a, an existing structure and facility that is there as well okay it, has there been any uh discussion or is there any concern that any of the surrounding properties have an issue we sent notices where no one was in attendance for the public hearing with Planning and Zoning Commission, and I don't believe there's anyone in the audience for this one as well. The building that is proposed to be there is essentially an unmanned building, so vehicle trips per day are almost none unless it's there for maintenance purposes. Okay. The property owner that sold it to them surrounds it, correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so people within the appropriate got no <coughs> about it. Okay. And then the adjacent property to the north is the utility. Correct. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Any other questions? Okay. Anybody in the audience has any questions, concerns? What I'll do then is I'll close the public hearing. Focus on both the uh, rezone and the plant. Um, anybody want to make a motion on the rezone? I'll make a motion to. How would you like it worded? I'll make a motion to rezone. Basically, uh, approve the, the rezone and plat request for Midco addition, I think, would suffice, unless there's any additional conditions you want to add on to it. You want to do them both at the same time? I That's fine. And for the rezone, it'll be the first reading. So yep. it'll be that second reading on consent for your next council meeting. Okay. So you want to combine them then? So, so moved. Or do you want me to do a, a combined? Yep. Okay. Um, a motion to approve the rezone and plat uh, for the Midco addition substation. 
Okay. Do we want to list the address or is that no, self that's fine. That's Okay. That's my motion. Okay. So Stephanie made a motion for the rezone and the plat. And we want to do a second. Second. Okay. Jeff does a second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. The El Dorado edition. Jace, you got that one. Yep. So this application again is for a public hearing uh, and rezone uh, for the El Dorado edition. Uh, <coughs> this is located just south of the Lagoon properties, just north of the Vista Industrial uh, subdivision. Uh, the applicant's proposing to subdivide approximately 3 point, or 32.81 acres in the 26 total lots. Uh, within that, they're proposing 24 lots of in intermediate density, uh, one 9.03 acre public facility lot, and, 4 .9, and one 4.92 acre light industrial lot. Um, additionally, the applicant's proposing to rezone this approximately 32.18 acres from its current district classification of C3 to R4, I1, and public facilities. Uh, the comprehensive plan designates the property as compact development. The proposed R4 district is deemed compatible with the future land use map designation and the proposed I1 district can be viewed as consistent with the zoning and designations of property directly south of this proposed project. <coughs> um, part of the discussion with the Planning and Zoning Commission at our last meeting was um, one of the applicants intents for this is to develop a, a shop house community or a shouse. Um, a lot of the conversation hinged on um, establishing the covenants for this project before to ensure that the applicant is going to end up getting the product that he wants. Um, and just a little background with Horace City Cone defining the attached single family house as a separate building containing only one dwelling unit only, to which it doesn't go any further on to defining, you know, what is considered a single family home. So with that, staff would consider a house as a compliant use within the R4 zoning district. Um, and on top of that, with the, the Planning and Zoning Commission voted 5-0 to approve this as well, or recommend approval to plat and rezone uh, with the condition that the, the CCNRs would be recorded before the recordation of the plat. And that was mainly for a protection for the city because these are um, larger lots than we've seen before. And within that R4 district, there's a new number of uses. And so what they wanted to do was establish kind of the baseline of what those lots would be used for, whether it's just a single family home or the Shouse community concept, they kind of wanted the applicant to establish, you know, what is the intention for this development. Um, the proposed development provides two ways in and out via Betty Avenue and Lillian Avenue. Um, 7th Street East will be required to be constructed as a part of this project's development. And with that, sufficient right of way has been proposed for this. Um, other than that, like I said, the Planning and Zoning Commission, they voted 5-0. Um, I would note that there's been a couple changes to the plat, and that's what the document on your packet or on your desk is tonight. Um, there was an update to the uh, dedication line uh, for the signatures on the plat that would dedicate the 9.03 acre lot to the city, to which would be used for a future public works facility. Um, and then between lots, Get my notes. Nine, eight, seven, six, and five of block one. There was minor readjustments or reallocation of the square footage between those lots. So minor shifts just between the, the square footage between all of those lots was is proposed in that. And other than that, those are the, the only changes between the recommendation of the Planning and Zoning Commission um, and where we're at here tonight. So applicant is in attendance tonight uh, and the property owner as well so if you guys have any questions for me or them I'm more than happy to answer them. okay why well, don't they do this we'll just open up public hearing for the rezone and the plat at the same time um anybody have any questions concerned them? whoever wants to go first All right. jack go ahead yeah mr mayor uh, members of council jack dwyer um owner's representative for uh the sparks and I'm here to, uh, um, the Sparks support the plat application, rezone application. Um, we just have, uh, I'm here to address the council re with regard to the conflict that uh, we have with the El Dorado edition and the pending Sparks edition application um, for road names. And so I'll hand out uh, just a master plan, master plan. Some of you have seen this. Thank you. Yeah. 
So, um, as you can see, what we have uh, proposed as the Sparks Boulevard and Luther Avenue um, tie into what would be considered, I think, Betty and Lillian, yeah. Correct. which is what uh, Jace mentioned. I'm sorry, just one more time. Those first road names? Uh, you can see Sparks Boulevard on the southeast west street. Oh, yep, yep. Sorry, got and it. And then the other one, the other east west street would be Luther Avenue. Got it. Which would, uh, those two streets tie into the El Dorado subdivision. Um, so the Sparks, uh, you know, I guess they're, they're wanting to do something um, grand for the city of Porus, and they um, are, are hoping to, you know, name the streets in honor of their um, heritage, the folks that acquired the land back in the, you know, early 80s. <coughs> and so, I, you know, I guess that's the, uh, the comments that we had. So, um, again, we support the subdivision, We're just concerned about the road names. About as, as it enters into the area of El Dorado. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Correct. It looks like they have uh, I see what you're saying. and Betty. He means this right because then it just goes right in. Yeah. 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 So it's top end. If I see what you're saying. Yep, I see it. If the, if the roads can be named independently, um, that would be fine. Um, but, uh, we, you know, we'd just really like to have Sparks and Luther coming through our subdivision for the entire half mile. Okay. Kelly, you're here. Kelly. Do you have Sorry. heartburn over that, Kelly, or what? Um, hi, Kelly Vesta. Good evening, council and <coughs> mayor. Um, our, our road's very short in there, so I'm not going to get too hung up on it. But Jack and I spoke outside, and I just said, I don't know whose family, these are my grandmother's names. I said, I don't know whose family is more important, but we'll let the council decide. And I'm not going to battle over it. I don't care either way at the end of the day. Um, you don't care? I, I mean, you do, but you I do, but I'm not going to yeah. sit and waste a lot of people's time over. Jack, do you think they'd be, if, if you named one and Kelly got to name the other, would that work? I'm just saying, you know, as opposed to it's all or nothing, can we have somebody get one name from their family on one of the streets and the other one get it on the other one, or the avenue? Uh, I'm just saying. He had proposed to me outside one of their grandmother's names is Lillian. That's what I mean. And also use Sparks. I guess he gets both of what they want. Um, I suppose it's not... Um, advantageous to, to leave them separate correct with no. with with the yeah with the your area community. having your own names no. we, don't, we don't want to do it'll that. get messy and it's okay. a loop okay. through there too okay so. yeah. yeah because it kind of because of the loop and yeah. you know they have the same issue out at the yeah. other right. end of town yeah. with the industrial <coughs> i guess if i went that way then i would change it to um visto something instead of lillian and betty i just threw my grandmother's names on when we did this way back in the day and thought, well, if there's a name on it, I'll... We did one on our industrial that says Eno. That's my grandfather's name. That's all it was for. It wasn't... And if they went to let us, I wouldn't have lost any sleep over it. But if they want to do Visto Sparks, I'd be for that. But I do like... I like the heritage names on the roads. I mean, I, I like that's a nod yeah. to, to the past. I like that. Um, Jack, Sparks hasn't... They don't have another development right like this is their their only correct this will be yeah. it yep. this is it and so kelly what we what what kind of a compromise do you think you guys have come up with or we didn't we you just <laughs> <laughs> you had a talk it's not that we're i just said you know i think we just throw at the board what we both feel and we'll let them decide that's how that's how i feel about it. i just um in our industrial development, we didn't name anything Visto in there. It's called Visto, and, and that all goes through there. Um, I, I don't know if it'd be right. I mean, we're 30 acres there, 90, to run a Visto through their whole development. Um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Or you guys just name what you want, and 
But I do like that a little bit of heritage there. Berkland Drive. I'm kidding. <laughs> so, sorry, um, I don't have a ton of. Mr. Mayor, just a couple comments quick. Yep. So, in mm -hmm. terms of Visto, I would recommend against that because we do have Visto Drive up to the north. Mm -hmm. um, so, don't oh, worry about yeah, repeating street is. names. Uh, we do have our street naming and addressing policy in place that does prohibit names, common names to be road names. However, I also note that these were submitted applications before that policy was mm -hmm. approved. Well, I might have an unpopular opinion with Kelly, but I do think that being as Sparks, in my opinion, Sparks doesn't have another piece of property to my knowledge that they're planning on developing. I'm kind of um This is my last one too. <laughs> so I mean but you do have your name out there too, Kelly. You know, you have I I'm I have in a few ounces of Lillian and Sparks. L Lillian, Lillian would work for Sparks? Avenue. Lillian would in place of Luther Avenue? Or and then how or so they have a Lillian in their family? Correct. Yes, they're at the, would you like me to say Yeah, that? please. Uh, yes, correct. The, uh, on the Luther side, the grandmother's name was Lillian. I know my clients would strongly prefer Luther, and so that was uh, what they asked me to, to uh, ask you today. L Luther Lillian Lane? Luther Lillian Avenue? <laughs> I'd probably say we'd go with Warren. But we, do you think they would be okay with uh, if, they, if Lillian? I mean, I know you're yeah, trying yeah. to speak. You're trying to speak for them, and they're not here. But yeah. I'm just wondering if that would be something that we could, because you know, it would be nice. I understand where Kelly's coming from. I understand where you're coming mm -hmm. from. But being we do have this situation here, I think a compromise would probably be the best way to handle this, if possible. And right. If Lillian would work. Not ideal, but I'm just saying. So I think you know. If the council wanted to go with that direction, um, that's that's up to you. I, I don't have the authority to say yes to that, but I uh, understand that that would be a compromise. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. <coughs> Thoughts, Jeff? Um, personally, myself, uh, I would stick with uh, Sparks Boulevard. Um, I believe that's one of the ones we're talking about coming in here. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably leave the Sparks Boulevard. And yeah. Um, yeah. do a compromise for the other one, mm -hmm. if that's possible. Yeah, and have the top one where Luther Avenue is, and just that whole area be Lillian Avenue. Yeah. I do like the nod to the heritage. Um, and it would be nice if we could come up with a, a solution or a little compromise on it. Um, mm -hmm. What you're, what you're yeah, I'm good. To? I'm good with a compromise if the sparks would be okay with that. I and not that Kelly's isn't, you know, important. It is. I just he's got other developments, and this is their um, their baby. So. But we do have Lillian. We do have Lillian. Lillian. That's what I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's what you guys want to do, I'm fine. Is that acceptable by? Is me. Okay. Jack, is that acceptable? Like you said, he can't really say because he doesn't <laughs> talk not to here him. And I don't. I don't. Yeah. So my instructions were to come down here and ask for Luther and Sparks. Okay. <laughs> Somebody want to make a motion or talk more? Or Mr. Mayor, more? just clarification yeah, no. wise. Yeah. Um, so, with this compromise, we would have Lillian Avenue would be Sparks Boulevard, Betty Avenue would then turn into Lillian Avenue. Yes. So, line up with proposed what, what would be or could be Luther and future <coughs> Sparks Boulevard. Lillian, Does that sound yeah. Lillian. Yep, the top one would be Lillian Avenue, the bottom one would be Sparks Correct. Boulevard. Yes. All right, let's ask this. Anybody else got any comments about it that they want to make? Otherwise, I'm going to close the public hearing. Unless somebody's got anything else. Okay. Any non-name change related questions, I would be happy to answer. I think we're pretty hot and heavy on to the name thing right now. <laughs> <laughs>
but yeah, it's, I don't know if anybody has any other questions on the rezone or the plat thing either. But the name, the naming was. Okay. Yeah. I'll look for somebody to make a motion then. Or it's just a motion on the name thing, is that right? Okay. You want to do that, or you want me to just we do the? Let's include that as a condition of approval that. Okay. Lillian becomes Sparks Boulevard, and Betty become Lillian Avenue. And then also, if you guys are wanting to continue count our, the commission's recommendation of recording the CCNRs before this plat records, I would ask that be included in the motion as well. Okay. Who wants to pick that up? That sounds like a mouthful. Um, He'll fill in the blanks for you. I guarantee you. I did have one question about Sholmes first before I. Um, this is. is it, Single family residence for Sholmes, or what? What is it actually? Do you want to explain that? Well, for Shouse, I mean, there's a lot of different. There's just not a structure <laughs> that I can say that is a Shouse. But really, all we're trying to do is be able to build or sell lots that people can. I guess the way to say it is, your garage can be a little larger than your house, and and in some restrictions in Fargo and that, they don't allow that. So if you had a six stall garage and a 2,000 square foot house, that's a shouse. Or a 500 square foot garage and a 500 square foot house, that's still a shouse. Really all with the CCR stuff is that if someone came in there and bought a lot and wanted to build a two story house, would we be fine with that? And at the end of the day, like I told uh, planning and zoning, We'd be fine with it. It's just they got to know that what they're going to be building by, or what their a regular house would be building by us in there. So that's really, and I wouldn't restrict if somebody wanted to come in and just build a regular house in there. I really we don't care, um, but they wanted covenants to kind of define it a little better on what kind of structures and that. But really, I mean, in a house, there's you might have a little 2,000 square foot place with just an attached garage. Some people are looking at like a 100 foot uh, shop attached. And none of this is commercial. I mean, it is fully residential. We're going to have, uh, like in our covenants and our association that will be operating this, um, you know, unlicensed vehicles sitting outside, motorhomes sitting outside. We don't want any of that more than... Um, Lost River or Cub, you know, any of that. It, it is a residential place. Just maybe so you can store more toys in your residence instead of having to go rent a shop across town to put your motor home in or something like that. But really, um, that's, I guess, maybe you've all seen them online and stuff, these different style houses. That's really what we just want to be able to build those out there. It still goes through planning and zoning of Horace. To approve the structures, approve the build, the building permits, and all that, but um, just to have that capability of putting, and I and I think we talked about also unattached garages. That was part of it. That we're not looking so they can go and put a huge unattached shop in the backyard either. That's not what we're looking for. It's just a nice looking. They might be stucco houses. Some might be metal siding, like you see a uh, Thor building or something like that, or regular steel siding, but that's. It's just mainly the structure size of store toys is really what it is. Mm -hmm. So, okay. did okay. that answer that kind of? Any other questions? <clears throat> Thanks, Kelly. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else then? Then I'll close the public hearing on both the reason and the plat. All right, so. Who wants to try and make this uh, motion? We'll combine that. We'll combine the rezone on the plat too. All right. To make it one big. So I'm going to make this motion. Um, make a motion to approve the rezone and the plat for Eldorado Edition. Um, provided the change of names for the streets in the Eldorado Edition to match up with. Uh, previously decided upon names between both parties <coughs> for the Sparks edition and the Eldorado edition, consisting of the 
Sparks Boulevard and the Lillian Avenue, I believe is the two, is that correct? Yep, it would replace Luther. It would yeah. replace Luther, um, Lillian with Luther? Um, Luther with Lillian. Okay, sorry. We, we've, got the, we've got the street name changed down. We got the street name changed down. Just approve it with street name changes and the condition that the covenants be recorded uh, prior, prior to the plat being recorded. Okay. That motion then. <laughs> what Jeff said. Who can I get a second? Second. Okay. Then he does a second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. The motion carries. <clears throat> Thank you. Brenton, you got the next one. Sorry, you don't write as fast as everybody. So I know. Catching up. Do you have it on there? That's it. You should have it there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. This one here is the preliminary budget for the, for two, 2024. Um, the goals for tonight, as I have on here, is just to set a cap of the property tax levy. A lot of times people will say mills. Mills translate, it basically is the mill rate times the value of the mill equals your property tax levy. So as you look at it in the budget, it'll say property tax levy. That's what it is. Um, very similar to the mill rate, but the mill rate is that rate times the value of the mill. So we set the property tax levy, and then our, also, our other goal tonight is to set a public hearing date for the preliminary budget. Um, it has to fall within between September 7th and October 7th. Um, our budget is due to the county October 10th and then September 18th or October 2nd would be the council meetings that we have regularly scheduled to where you could do a public hearing date unless you want to do a special meeting but those are currently scheduled dates for council so that we have okay um, I'll go back and forth with Matt. Matt will touch base on some of these too. Uh, I'll just touch base here. And this slide is uh, the value of mill is around 60.12 or 11. Uh, the mill rate, what we're proposing in this preliminary budget has a reduction of approximately half a mill uh, based on the latest information from Cass County. That is a little moving target for us um, because they lock in the value based on your levy amount and also the value of the mill or value of the mill and that value rate is not locked in till later in the year from the county so we're normally pretty darn close to it uh, but we are proposing a very slight reduction there uh, and the value of a mill for 2024 budget is approximately 35,000 so the next one matt will touch base on this one here Mr. Mayor, members of council, um, to reiterate what uh, Brent said, this is a preliminary budget, uh, so we're setting that cap, uh, which means we can't go up after tonight, but we can go down. We have two months uh, to play around with figures still. Uh, so this preliminary budget provides approximately a half a mil decrease, uh, which we're quite happy with. You see our neighbors are proposing increases, uh, Boris is proposing a decrease. Uh, we're not proposing any franchise fee changes. We're going to remain at 2%. Um, neighbors are increasing. As for the utility funds, uh, in the water fund, uh, there's no change in budget. Uh, the rate change that has been delayed will be implemented prior to the new budget. Uh, sewer, there's no change. Solid waste, uh, we are proposing a rate change from $25.20 per month to $27 a month. Uh, this change is due to an annual increase from waste management um, on, on the service they provide. Forestry and Vector uh, will also have no changes in utility rates. Uh, the franchise fees are charged for various <coughs> utilities that operate within the city and within the city's right of way, uh, such as Cass County Electric, Excel, Midco, other cable services, uh, Spotlight, <coughs> providers. Um, right now, uh, Horace charges 2% in franchise fees. Uh, again, we're not proposing an increase there. Uh, most revenue from those franchise fees is from Cass County Electric. Um, touch base on the general fund revenues. Um, as I mentioned, there's a reduction. The, we are reflecting a decrease in building permit revenue. 
Uh, in the 2023 budget, we account for 260 new homes. In this budget, we're accounting for 225 new homes. Uh, so that's why you do see a little bit of a decrease for uh, new home construction. State aid distribution is increased by 135,000. Uh, this is based on the state's 2022 population estimate, which puts us just under 4,300 people. Um, I believe it was right around 90, Ninety-one dollars per person is Something their formula. Um, so we did have an increase in state aid distribution. Now we we do share some of that with Horse Fire. They get ten percent of that, and the Park District gets ten percent of that. Um, franchise fees, as Matt mentioned, um, other communities are looking at going up from two percent to four uh, percent. We are not going up, or we're not proposing to increase that uh, this year. And our main revenue stream for franchise fee would be electric. Cass County Electric is probably is the biggest one, um, followed by gas, and then the two others are for cable providers, uh, Midco and Sparklight. We cannot charge a franchise fee for internet. It would only be for cable services from those telecommunication companies. Um, can you go back one there? And then the other area is interest earnings, large increase due to raise interest rates. As we all, as may know, interest rates have been going up. Last year, when we were going through the 2023 budget, interest rates are around half percent. Now they're in that ballpark of four to five and a half percent in the time. Um, Matt and I have gone back and forth on this one a lot of where our comfort level would be within the budget for interest earnings. Um, we did try to take a what we felt was somewhat conservative approach with the interest earnings, mainly because we didn't want to be in a situation where we end up short on our overall budget. If we end up having more interest earnings than what we had reflected, that money goes into fund balance. I come back to you towards the end of the year and ask the council what we'd like to do with it. Would you like to use it for reserves, capital? What, what would you like to do? and that's a lot better position for the city to be in and the volatility of interest rates as we know they keep on changing all the time that's why i didn't want to rely heavily on that so next one here you want to go over expenditures really quick sure uh so expenditures out of general fund uh, these are uh, capital equipment purchases that we're going to discuss in here so, <coughs> Uh, our contingency is at $135,000. Uh, the majority of that, uh, over $100,000, is where the 5% discount um, for paying property taxes on time uh, this is reflected. Um, that will, it's about $105,000 uh, if everyone paid their taxes on time. <coughs> uh, $120,000 increase to the highway fund from, from general fund for fiscal year 2023. $15,000 increase to the reserve, the general reserve fund. Um, we have a budget of $25,000. Uh, and $85,000 for a new proposed position uh, for the code enforcement officer. And then looking at equipment specifically <coughs> uh, at our general fund, uh, we're looking at two new vehicles, uh, one specifically for public works and one for building inspectors. Uh, we're looking at additional mowers uh, a replacement of a side by side, uh, and then finance a street sweeper and a crane truck, and then uh, purchase an additional snow blower. I have a quick question. Are the vehicles, were those additions or replacements? Vehicles are additions. Additions. Yeah, right now we have uh, Public <coughs> Works uh, has one vehicle. Two vehicles. Uh, but they're always out, so looking for one more public works, and then inspectors are sharing one vehicle uh, out of that fleet. We have three billion inspectors using one vehicle, and then the project manager is using another one yeah. for that area. Uh, looking at the highway fund, uh, we're looking to fund it from general fund for $350,000. Uh, there is not a lot of um, revenue opportunity for the highway fund. Uh, so it really heavily depends on general fund contribution. Uh, the state highway tax is minimal uh, towards the fund and it continues to decrease. Um, we are 
you may be aware, of the state to prepare for a uh, distribution of 2% less than what was distributed in 2022. So, uh, we have $140,000 from the state for that. Um, we're also proposing that we convert our current <coughs> uh, part-time public works position to full-time. And that cost is spread between uh, the highway funds, um, water, sewer, forestry, and vector funds. Look at the water fund for expenditures. There are no drastic changes. Uh, any changes reflected correlate to the <coughs> users. Uh, we are assuming 80 new accounts throughout the year. Uh, so there's going to be a decrease in tap fees, uh, but an increase in water charges uh, from fiscal year 20. The sewer fund, again, there's no drastic changes. Um, they will correlate to more users. And we're using that assumption of 225 new accounts throughout the year. Solid waste fund, uh, we covered that proposed rate increase. Um, it maintains composting, spring cleanup, trash, recycling services, everything that provides to us. And um, the location for carbon recycling to adequately handle it as the main issue that we're working towards. Uh, looking at the forestry fund, uh, we're not proposing any in, uh, increase in the utility fee. Um, we do have the intention to spend our fund balance down. Um, we're going to increase Boulevard Tree Program costs, or, I'm sorry, we're proposing the increase in Boulevard Tree Program costs from $50 to $75 uh, due to that cost of trees. I received that uh, a couple weeks ago that they will be increased for 24. Um, however, this fund is not impacting the levy amount in general fund. It will be reflected in the forestry budget only. Um, revenues and expenditures, uh, looking at the primary differences from 22, 23, and 24, uh, because we implemented the goal of our tree program. Um, the three pieces of equipment that we're proposing uh, to spend that fund balance down uh, is the dump trailer. And then in the vector fund, uh, again, no <coughs> increase in the utility fee, uh, looking to spend some of that fund balance down. And the primary expense uh, on capital is for preventative measures, contractual with cast kind of vector control, uh, looking for a side by side and a sprayer for the <coughs> side by side uh, so we can go into um, the hard to reach area. Uh, to recap, this is a preliminary budget. Uh, we're setting that max cap. So we can go down from here, we just can't go up. Uh, so what we recommend is that the preliminary budget for fiscal year 2024 is approved as presented, and the public hearing date is set for either September 18th or October 2nd of this year. And we're happy to field any questions you may have. As far as like the public hearing date, I think I'd rather have it on September 18th. We can kind of do October 10th, we do it October 2nd, and not a lot of time. That's what I mean. I'd rather do it on September 18th. But. <coughs> That's fine. <coughs> Other questions? Anybody? No, I realize this is preliminary, and so <coughs> we don't have to get in the weeds on everything. Uh, and I realize you're trying to go for a max, and you can't go up after tonight, so. Correct. <coughs> Being the other jurisdictions have gone up on um, stuff. We we're still we're comfortable with this. I, I know. I just yep. I know. I just want to make sure we're all comfortable with that too. Um, well, I'm wondering if we can go lower than half a mil. Well, I mean, our initial target was five, and. The two meetings I had with you and Britain prior to me finding out different last week Thursday, that was still doable. And it so is. I am still going to try to push for that. Okay? It is doable. Okay. Um, professionally, I would recommend against it uh, because if you lower it drastically now, you might get yourself into a situation where in a year or two, we need to bring it sharply back up. So well, I feel like there should be a compromise <clears throat> between half a mil and five because 
I mean, in my opinion, we do have a little bit of some pork in there, in my opinion, that we could maybe trim off. My opinion, I don't know how you yeah. guys are feeling. No, I, mean, I think there's a there's a there's some <clears throat> things that we maybe need to have a deeper discussion on that are that are proposed in in the budget. I mean, this is this is to me this is a year where we're bringing on probably one of the largest influxes of new homes and increase in value into our budget. Mm -hmm. um, and our residents have seen drastically increasing property values over the last few years. I would like to see us lower the mill more than that. Um, to try to cushion these ever increasing values um, on property value, I, I think I think it behooves us to do that as a top priority. Mm -hmm. Right, but we also have to remember too that we have taken on extra costs this year for the inflationary things. So I mean, we have to be aware of that as much as I'd like to do it too. We do have to be cognizant that yep. pretty much what Matt said: if we go too far down, we'll have to do a too big a jump. And I like the consistency we've had over the last five years without having to raise or lower the mills has been good. I mean, I don't know what property value has gone up, mine have gone up too. But okay. if we start dropping too much, we might have to sit and compromise up next time, so. <coughs> no, Nobody no, I don't want to see up. that either, but also I'm, I am wondering mm -hmm. if it's like, do we need, a, Jace, do we need a code enforcement officer? I mean, is that something that would warrant a full-time position. Is that something the residents are asking for? Uh, I mean, because that's, well, I don't know what you had on there for right. cost, but that's mm -hmm. another $85,000 that we could, you know, what's a mill? 35000 yeah. yeah. So. That's a couple of mills right there. That's a couple. Mm -hmm. Or what are your thoughts on, on, the, on that, Jace? So, I mean, I guess it's going to come down to what level of service do we want to do. I, I am doing the best I can to maintain the code enforcement that we are doing. Yeah. However, when I hear from residents who are calling complaining because we sent one letter to a resident, they cut it down and then the next two weeks they're back right up and they're wondering why can't we do anything more. I unfortunately don't have the hours to stay on top of that. Mm -hmm. I went through two, three subdivisions on one of my rounds and 127 properties come out after that. I mean, there is enough of that throughout the summer and then potential other things <coughs> that could set up a full-time job or even potentially a part-time. But in my wishing of how much more we could do in code enforcement, I unfortunately with the planning and zoning, the economic development and everything else, I don't have the time that I would like to put into <coughs> code enforcement that needs to be done. Well, and the other thing too is like, you know, we have this erosion control, it isn't being handled either. And that's just, the state can come and be a little bit more assertive about that. Mm -hmm. Would that fall under code so enforcement? Well, our, our intentions would it. be that they would mm -hmm. help, their primary responsibility would be, excuse me, would be code enforcement and then their secondary responsibility would be helping out with the stormwater side of things. Mm -hmm. So that way we have somebody that could really get on the builders about erosion control. I know Joel, our project manager, and our building inspectors do, and even Public Works, they are out there um, as they can, saying, hey, you guys need to have this in place, but there are some things that we could do to step up our stormwater management program. And having those two areas, the code enforcement and stormwater, would be very helpful. Now, we do, like I said, we do have some staff that does help on stormwater, but it frees them up then to be able to tackle some other areas. Well, I so. thought we had a conversation about Public Works, that employee that you want to hire would be doing stormwater. They could, they could be, and I, Adam could touch base on the needs for Public Works, um, what they have, if you, if you want his perspective there. Do you want to start on stormwater stuff as far as an employee goes? I don't even know how many cash basins we have in the city that need to be clean. Um, so that's a very large undertaking. We have the equipment to do so now, but appropriating that time to get it done, it's kind of a two-man operation to do safely. It's, there's a lot. Every new subdivision we add, we add a couple hundred storm inlets. There's, there's a lot. Another point to consider is, you know, when these capital expenditures are being proposed, um, you know, we took uh, priorities from staff uh, 
to put them in. We left a whole host of other things on the floor. If there are different items, uh, for capital expenditures that the council does not agree with, instead of taking that and cutting the bills and putting yourself in a position where next year we have to jack them up by six or seven, uh, we can look at other capital items that didn't make that first cut and see if the council would like those better. Staff and services for residents. Yeah, I think the other thing to remember tonight is we are not um, doing the final budget. This is just our preliminary. We can go down from here, but we can't go back up. If we approve the preliminary budget for half a mil decrease, then the next meeting, if we have another conversation, I can talk to you a little bit more about our expenditures. We can go down. Yeah, if just, we as a council. If you approve tonight, we cannot do anything that goes above, above mm -hmm. yep. half a mil decrease. So if we have the areas of your concern, so like we're hearing code enforcement officer position. Um, that's one of those, you know, Matt and I could go back, okay, you're wanting to push five mil decrease in code enforcement officer. Uh, if you don't want that one there, then we'll go back, review that and go, okay, how much does that impact us? And then, it, upcoming meeting we could bring that up and go okay here's where we're at here's what it'll look like so if we and approve a half a mil you decrease, can still decrease we can still do yes. another decrease yes. Between now and oh. we have 60 days, 63 days. i mean for the staff that are here i just want you to you guys to know like i'm not by any means trying to like minimize your needs at all um and i and i get we have things that that are important to the staff i i do want to be mindful to the residents who have really um who have reached out to me saying that they are struggling with the rising cost of being here because of um, property taxes and just in general the economy is you know so I would like to see if we can get it down lower. That's my opinion. I don't know how you guys are feeling, but I don't think half a mil is sufficient enough for the residents. So I don't know what that looks like, um, but that's my thoughts. And I know we don't have to make um, the direct decisions here tonight, but I appreciate that staff has come here, specifically Adam, I appreciate that you came. Could, could we just, since you're here again, we have the opportunity, could we just discuss a little bit what you see as the needs for your equipment, the crane, uh, the, the crane truck, and the street sweeper? Can, can you just and give us tree, your thoughts? And or, the tree spade. Oh, I'm sorry, and a tree spade. Yeah. Um, so, start the street sweeper. Um, we do currently own a street sweeper. Um, it, according to OSHA, probably we shouldn't be gone. Uh, it doesn't have a dust suppression system. Um, the OSHA's current uh, regulations on equipment and producing dust, it's, we would probably get fined. Uh, it's very old. The last time we had an uh, estimate done to fix the water suppression system on it, I think it was like $25,000, and that was about, eight, about 10 years ago. Um, we do use it periodically as an emergency backup. Um, with our current MS4 status that we have, just because we're in such close proximity to Fargo, West Fargo, Moorhead, um, we're required to do a lot more stormwater maintenance than Kindred, Castleton, Mapleton, you know, a lot of those smaller communities that we more so fit in with. But when we're attached to Metro, we have to maintain more of a strict standard that they do as far as keeping dirt and everything out of our stormwater system that flows into waters in the state. In order to do that, we contract with ProSweep. They have 70 other cities that they contract with, and that's the biggest problem, is to be able to get them on a timely manner. Today is a perfect example. Um, just with the weather, they were planning on coming out next week before mean days to start sweeping. But with their schedule filling up, they had to start sweeping Horus today instead of next week. I would have preferred them to wait so it would have dried up and a lot of the mud wouldn't be there. So now we'll probably have to have to come back again just to touch up some areas, just to you know keep every keep everything tidy because we wait wait long enough. Um, the 
the other, the other good reason to have one around is emergencies. Two weeks ago, or a week or two ago, we had uh, contractors that dropped a five pound bucket of nails on a street. Um, we routinely have dump trucks that'll lose part of a load over the side or they'll hit the wrong switch and open the tailgate. Um, you know, it's, it's nice to have something on hand for that. It's one of those things where we should probably be sweeping a lot more than we are. Um, we're trying to be frugal with that just because of the cost expenditures. Um, I did get another invoice today for July. July was $2,000. Uh, this year has actually been really light just because it's been so dry. There's as much mud coming up on the road so you can kind of relax on the, on the sweeping a little bit. Compared to like Fargo, West Fargo, Moorhead, their street sweeping crews are running all the time. Uh, Joel's neighborhood, they go by his house every two weeks, maybe every third if they're backed up. Um, so as far as, as far as as far as the MS4 goes, that's kind of the frequency that we should be doing a lot of these things. And it's going to be one of those things where we just have to allocate a guy to <coughs> spend you know, 20 hours in a week sweep, sweeping all the time. I was just going to say, do you have the manpower for it? It's one of those things where we're not going to have a choice. If we start, if we start getting into the issues, um, the state came last year and started looking at Maple Lakes. Um, so we're kind of on their radar, especially with all the building we have. Um, West Fargo got fined, was that a couple years ago for the wilds? It was a few years back. They got fined for it. It was more than the code enforcement position. That was their fine. Do you guys yeah. have a lot of overtime in the summer or not? Is it mostly in the winter? Uh, both. It depends. Their, their overtime is heavier in the winter time. It than is heavier. Summer. It is heavier. Unless we have a very wet year and they get call outs a lot for lift stations being overloaded, then the overtime is heavier in the winter. I just know this is more probably common. more of your guys' vacation time and if you are starting to dedicate somebody to one of these machines, you're going to have to ask for yet another person for public works. Well, and that's part of the reason for the, the increase for the, from the full-time, that part-time position we have open to go to the full-time. Okay. Um, and the, the part-time position that we fill, he was basically putting in full-time hours anyway. Okay. So that, that was my, my question I'm leading to is that it's not only a street sweeper, you're going to have to look at additional hours to man when these is yep. part of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. challenging, but like I said, it's something I'd, I'd rather have one and be able to cut back on something else to get somebody in it than take one of those fines from the state. Well, and then how, who knows how long the one we've been piecemealing together is going to last at all. Pretty much every time we take it out, we're just waiting for it to let it fire. Yep. <laughs> what about the tree spade? <clears throat> tree spade? Yeah. Um, we use that for the uh, tree planting program. It exponentially speeds up the process of planting the trees. Um, how much does it cost to rent it, though, versus, I mean? The rental period that we used it for this year was 2000 that was not the entire time that we were planning. What is the budget? What is it listed for for price? Twenty. Twenty. Hmm? So, so my question on that then is it more worthwhile to rent one every year and not have to worry about upkeep and maintenance on a yeah. rental tool versus owning one and then having the depreciation actually upkeep on it? One of the issues what kind of rental period you look at each year. Yeah, if we're gonna if we're gonna keep adding trees, um, part of the problem is is the availability of it. Um, kind of a specialized piece that not a lot of people have, and there's kind of a demand for it. Um, so, and even even this year, that they were calling back and forth back because they had a bunch of people that were in line to get it. Well, how many? I'm sorry to ask such stupid questions, but like when you use how often like out of all the trees that you guys did for the tree program mm -hmm. like how many times did you use the actual tree spade versus having to hand dig because of utilities in the ground I would say probably 60% it kind of depends on the on the neighborhoods some neighborhoods are more friendly to use it than others uh, Maple Lakes was a <coughs> friendly neighborhood to do it in um, I know Doug and uh, Doug and Mark went down there one afternoon for about two and a half hours and got the holes done for like 18 trees. You know, and that was just, you know, quick, 
Mm -hmm. We were to have to do something like that by hand, it would have been <coughs> you know, four to six people all day. Mm -hmm. the, the number of trees probably works planted once they got the tree spade versus when they had to dig it by hand. It was, what, double? Two, two, two and a half times? But do you foresee least. it being an issue in the future, though, with not being able to use it due to the underground utilities? It all depends on the neighborhood and how they're designed. Mm -hmm. Are we being mindful of that when we're looking at... Well, I think it's, it's where if you're in a newer development, the tree spade, in most areas, I'm going to generalize here, but most areas you're going to have a bigger a boulevard where you have a dedicated space and those utilities are concentrated a little bit more because they're getting put in at the time of the development. Uh, if you have an area that is um, an older neighborhood that has, is more concentrated, I'll take like Wall Avenue. Wall Avenue is a utility highway. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff down there and they're more likely to have to hand take in that area than tree spade it. Is that fair assumption, Ann? Yep. So, it, a lot of times your newer developments, you have a boulevard area that is a lot cleaner. So it's the older developments that are a little if you A little trickier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Any questions from the tree state? And then the crane truck? Crane truck. Um, crane truck is going to be more of a multi-use tool than anything. Um, its intended purpose, what we need it for the most, is the crane feature. We have, quite frankly, too many lift stations in this town. We have, where are we at, Jim? 24? Just built 14 or planning 15, 16, and 17 on the sanitary side, so. Yep. All these lift stations vary from some of the small storm lift stations are 12 feet deep to 32, 34 feet deep. They all have at least one pump, some two pumps. Most of the pumps are, you know, approximately waist high and a little bit less for some of the small ones. They weigh anywhere from 200 to 1,000 pumps or more. Um, and we were I'm sorry, what is it? What do, you, what do you have to do with them? We have to pull them out. Oh. So they're, they're on guide rails. They slide up and down. So you have to, right now, we can only service in-house the, the new lift stations. We have them put in a pedestal basically just a straight pedestal with an arm that comes off the top with a hand crank. So you stand there and crank for 20 minutes to get one up, 20 minutes to get one down. Um, when we do it, like I said, the pumps are anywhere from 200 to 1,000 pounds. We can't do any of the big ones with that setup. It's a safety nightmare to deal with because then once you get them up, you have to put them on their side and then you <coughs> might have to split them in half to be able to service them. Part of the problems we're running into with every other city in the U.S. right now, flushable rags and things that shouldn't go down the drain. Mop heads, underwear, t-shirts, name it, we're finding it. And when that happens, we got to take them apart and <coughs> them enough, and we got to bring them back to the shop. And that's part of the big safety concern is being able to handle them. And that the crane truck is the tool to, to do it. Normally when we do lift stations and we have to pull a pump, I'm going to take three guys minimum, and if I can have four guys there, I'm going to have four guys there because they're just such a handful to deal with. And the guys that North Dakota Sewer Pump we contract to do a lot of our maintenance for all of our old lift stations, and they do a yearly inspection for us, um, they've got two guys. That's all they do. So really opens up the possibilities for that. but. On a day-to-day -day use, it's going to be, it's going to have like mechanics toolboxes on the side, so it's going to have puzzle a lot of tools for a lot of different areas, whether it's, you know, maintenance of a brake mower or the tractor or even down to, you know, there'll be chainsaws in it if they come across the tree limbs that are down or need to be trimmed. It's kind of a multi-use tool in that respect. So one thing I do want to point out is on these pumps, picture them as like a giant sump pump and like a smaller one might be about the size of Adam's backpack there. A bigger one would be about three or four times bigger. You know, three stand, or four feet they tall. Stand, they stand about this high. I, I think the biggest ones I've seen are about five or six feet tall. Not here, but I've seen some like that. Um, yeah, and then um, 
they're very they can be very expensive too the small one you're looking at what, about five thousand dollars but then you get to those big ones and you're talking tens of thousands of dollars for these pumps so if one was to drop you're looking at replacing the possibly of the pump plus repairs to that list station so that's why it's very a lot important of the, to it on top of the now, safety issues now it's not even so much the cost it's the lead time yeah some of these pumps can be a year or more mm -hmm. Yeah, we waited for some of those for quite a while. Yes. Okay. So, so I'm going to ask the question. Then. You're, you're asking for a tilt deck trailer on here for a skid steer. Is a skid steer able to do what you would need instead of that crane truck to be able to lift it up, put it on a trailer? Like I said, the whole the whole of most of these things are in is 30 feet. Okay. Or no, can same. the or can the truck suffice instead of the what are they called? Skid steers? That's not on the budget? We already have skid steers. Okay. We already have a skid steer. <laughs> no, it's just not feasible with the way, the amount of lift that you have in a skid steer, then you have to have people underneath it to be able to rehook and hook up the chain to lift it. So it's, it would almost be worse. Right now, if we have to load the pumps up, then we'll have to have somebody drive a skid steer out there to load, but then you still gotta load it in the bucket, get it up, pull it in the pickup where the grain truck literally pluck it out of the hole and just turn it and set it down in the back of the truck and you get back to the shop and just set it wherever you need to. Okay. What, what do you feel the life expectancies are of the crane, the crane truck and the street sweeper? Some of that's going to depend on, on how we want to do replacements as far as as far as equipment replacements, we don't have an equipment replacement policy. Every city is different. Fargo, for instance, they run a snowplow for 20 years. Minimum, the county, they're kind of on the same plan. Um, if you get in the right cycle where you can trade them in earlier, you can make more money off of it as far as replacing it. That's something we've been looking at is what is the perfect time frame, but a crane truck, you know, would comfortably last eight to ten years, you know, unless there was mechanical problems or issues with it, um, depending on use, obviously. Uh, street sweeper, 15 plus, probably, something I would expect. So those cities that are running like plows or counties that are running plows for 20 years, they also typically have on staff mechanics there maintain them on a re regular basis and everything like that. I'm not saying that our guys aren't maintaining equipment because they do maintain equipment, but uh, a lot of times those places will be a lot more aggressive with their maintenance and pre preventive maintenance measures. Um, but what Adam was talking about too of where uh, an area that we'd like to be looking into and just haven't been able to yet is looking at creating a plan of when is the appropriate time to replace equipment and vehicles to maximize their value and replacement. So the example is a like a street sweeper. The cost for the city to be able to procure that sweet street sweeper is typically less than what it is if any of us were just to go buy a street sweeper. Uh, same thing with our road grader. We get uh, contracted pricing or pre-negotiated out pricing like state contract or there's a group called Sourcewell that negotiates out prices and then we don't have to deal with the bid process um, and that has been very helpful a lot of times we'll get those pieces of equipment cheaper than what like a contractor could or what anybody else could so that's where he's talking about of our purchase price versus what the trade-in sometimes you could time that to where you're able to replace equipment pretty easily or keep your costs down. Doesn't always work, but if you time it right, you can do pretty well and be writing fairly new equipment at minimal costs. So the one thing I would like to see is um, accurate pricing. So right now we have ballpark as far as some stuff goes. Um, I have no problem approving the max tonight, but I do want to narrow some stuff down. Um, because I'm, I'm assuming some of this stuff is probably going to be more expensive than what you've listed here. Some is probably going to be cheaper. I'll just say the trailer. Um, I want to get more accurate numbers. Um, for tonight, I have no problem approving the uh, preliminary. 
just so that you guys know we're we're trying to lower it. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Questions? My my goal, um, I agree. I agree with Jeff. I mean, I would I would approve the preliminary tonight, but my goal is to reduce the mills further than than uh, than what is than what is proposed. And I think once we get the accurate, maybe a little accurate pricing on the pieces, and maybe maybe there's a few things we can hold off on on uh, the tree spade. Um, I mean, maybe there. I think that there's some things that we can look at to reduce, um, and I think that we can get. I think we can get a lot lower than half a mill reduction. Um, one thing I do want to point out, just keep in mind, like the tree spade is in the forestry fund, so that does not have an impact on the mills. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. I, I misspoke. No, but, no, but you're just, fine. But just, just on, its, sure on its knows. face, too, I, I want to evaluate yep. whether we do actually need to purchase yep. a tree spade. Yep. Okay. Yep. I thank just you. want to make sure you're aware it's not impacting the mills. So. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Then we'll look for a motion to accept the preliminary budget as presented this evening. And then I'd suggest we do a September 18th to rediscuss this. I'll make that motion. Nail it. Okay. Okay, Jeff makes a motion. Can I get a second? Sure, I'll second. We does a second. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Brenton, City Hall. I'll give you a chance to finish right Yep. Here. Yeah, this next one here is regards to concerns from our staff in City Hall in regards to HVAC. Um, as you may have experienced being in City Hall there, especially in the summertime, uh, there's a, the heating or the cooling of City Hall isn't always the greatest, like in the conference room and some different areas of the building there. Uh, it's not even. Uh, we asked our staff asked Ryan Brothers Inc., which is a new business in Horace, to take a look at it just to see um, what could be done or, our, you know, give us a quote of what it would take to improve that heating and cooling HVAC within City Hall. Uh, they provide a quote which focuses on um, disconnecting some ductwork, seal all the ductwork, increase flow, insulate ductwork, prevent future damage from condensation, and install a larger air filter increased movement of the ducting system, also repair um, any rusty duct work and eliminate any unnecessary vents within that system. Uh, their quote was worth $5,526. You can see some $5,526. You can see some pictures in that memo. Um, I don't know, Jace, if you could click on that, then they could just see some examples of what's going on there. Um, this would, like I said, help improve that heating, cooling, and make it more consistent. Uh, what we have found is that the unit that we have, like the air conditioning unit, is adequate for the size of a city hall, the building. It's more of this duct work and ventilation that is the issue. So, Can I ask, when we did the remodel, was this stuff not? They did do some but not a complete overhaul of the HVAC, is my understanding. Adam, do you recall any of that? They did some work on it, but the problem is I don't think they were as cognizant of the changes that we were making to affect <coughs> how the balance of the system worked. But now mm -hmm. that the system's in place, and especially like in the conference room, if you close the doors, heat goes up. So we're not getting enough return air through. That's part of what's going to be replaced. Yeah. Um, either for this, I don't believe this is a very high amount for the work that they'd be doing. Um, around $5,500, it seems pretty reasonable. Um, and this was information obtained from our billing inspections department. They seeked out, like I said, they asked Ryan Brothers to take a look at it. So. And are you sure that the company that we use during the remodel can't, like, we're say all, oops our bad we screwed this up we went we've gone back and forth with them multiple times um and you can recall to what is it precision we went back and forth we've had them go through this 
Um, and that's why we asked another entity or another party to come look at it and see what they're seeing. So, um, but they were they were not backing it like what Ryan's is, Ryan Brothers is proposing to do. So Ryan Brothers is going to back up their work saying that it, it will solve the problem? Is that what you're saying? I'm just trying to put I, I words can't in put, your mouth. I know, I know, and I'm not. I can't put. I can't put words in their mouth. So I'm just saying that this is what they're identifying as the problems. Okay. So. I mean, I guess I'm a little upset that when we did the remodel, if the company that we used didn't mm -hmm. think that it was going to be sufficient enough for what they were doing, why didn't they say something? So. That's kind of frustrating to me. Mm -hmm. I feel like they kind of owe you an answer why they did that. If they touched some of it, not all of it. And as Adam mentioned, it's probably not as expected in the project what they were looking at doing within the budget or project. So all right. that's my understanding. Okay. So does that room have problems in cold weather then too? I believe Playing so. devil's advocate? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They're not as bad, but... It, it isn't as noticeable. It does take a little longer. But fixing to, the ducts will help it yes. with the heat too, yes. right? Yes. Should. We do have other improvements in the future for that building, such as windows inside and things like that, but we haven't brought those up we wanted to get through, figure out the stuck work, figure out this issue, and we've been holding off as long as we can on that, those other items. Okay. Yep. Um, overall, for the quote, was there, what's $5,526? I would ask that we go up a little bit there, just in case anything else comes up, but if you want for it right for that quote, you can. If you'd like to give us a little wiggle room, wiggle room, you can too. Ten or say no. Like, what are you thinking? Ten percent. I I would probably go just to keep it easy. I'd probably say either sixty five hundred or seventy five hundred or seven thousand or sixty five hundred right in there. It's pretty minimal. Okay. Is this a not to exceed like the? Uh, Audio system? If you'd like it to be <laughs> not to exceed, we could say that, but <laughs> I just, yeah. Okay. Normally, this type of work, they're pretty good about that price point, but I just don't know, you know, if anything comes up, I'm, I'm always a little leery of that, so. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the Ryan Brothers quote of. $5,526 to address the heating and cooling issues at City Hall uh, with a not to exceed sum of $6,500. Okay. Ziffy makes a motion. We want to second that. Second. Okay. Just a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Okay, Jim, you got the next one. All right, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, Public Works and Engineering determined the force main connection to Fargo <coughs> was leaking on June 8, 2023. Uh, this is a force main that consists of two parallel 8-inch pipes, and uh, Public Works was able to open and close and work some valves to shift the flow from one to another. Uh, this was up at this County Road, 70, County Road 17 and 76th Avenue roundabout. I don't know if you guys noticed earlier this summer that there was a perennial wet spot in the morning and the evenings on the southeast quadrant of it. So. Um, we got to looking into it, um, shut off some lift stations, turned them back on, and went, darn it. We now know what the problem is. Um, so we have an approximate location of the leak, but we do not know right now what is exactly leaking or what caused it. Could be a crack pipe failure fitting or a leaking joint. Um, I did go through last week and prepare an estimate for the repairs. Uh, it's about $90,000 worth of work because it's right almost smack dab in the middle of the roundabout. Um, but it does need to be fixed, obviously, because it is leaking wastewater out into the out into the. Uh, does that mean you got to shut down the roundabout? A leg of it. So <coughs> that's part of the reason why I didn't bring it to you earlier this summer is because of the closure <coughs> at 64th Avenue and 17 for the roundabout, 
plus the work that was going on around that area. So we're trying to fit this in in a, an appropriate time frame to get the work done. But of course, what starts in a couple of weeks? School. Well, is so, Lost River going to be able to get out still though? Because don't they come out on that road? Um, so they would, what we're looking at, and we haven't got plans or anything, that's what we're getting to with this, is you would close the southwest leg of that intersection, southeast leg of that intersection. If you're going, wanting to go west, eastbound, you go south of <coughs> Lakeview, back up Lakeview Drive, and then over to the 70s, out on 76th Avenue. It'd be a little detour of basically down to the salon. So you take half the roundabout you take, and down. Yeah. Okay. So we take a fourth of the roundabout out of commission. This how long one, do you think it'll take to do the repairs? Uh, depending upon what they find, a couple days. The okay. concrete the concrete replacement is going to be the longest portion of it, I think, okay. just because mm -hmm. that takes seven days. And you have three no to seven where days. It's actually at right now. We have an idea of where it is. We have record drawings and we have an idea of where the end of the casing is and that's where we think th the issue is so this is this is a pretty conservative estimate uh, um i think you can take it take at least two panels if not three panels and some sidewalk out um up at the roundabout but what i'm asking for you tonight is just but not the road the road no the road you oh, have the to road. Yeah. the road mm -hmm. yeah it's bad spot <coughs> so uh, the estimate is ninety thousand. The limitations for bidding a project is $200,000, so we wouldn't have to prepare full-blown plan and specs. We just prepare some quote documents, send them out to some contractors, and get some information back and get it get it to you guys. For this comes out of the that, contingency so. fund for the project. Anyway, well, this right? is so this project you know. is long long over. I mean, this was right. done in 2019, so mm -hmm. we're out of the warranty period. This is where wherever the auditor, we, administrator, and finance director want. We to we would need from. to. The, where I would suggest is from sales tax, that's infrastructure yeah. improvements and yep. repairs, things like that. So, so what I'm asking for tonight tax. is just um, directing the engineer to prepare and solicit quotes on behalf of the city to repair that that uh, force made. All right, I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay, now we made a motion. Stephanie, you a second. All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Another one there, Jim. All right, I do apologize. I found out that you guys didn't have this in your packet over the weekend, but this is, uh, hopefully you've had a chance to see it, at least the memo that I wrote last week on this Christensen Boulevard. So um, as Jay springs it up here, I think you can skip ahead to just the <coughs> map on the second page or the third page. Scroll over just a little bit. Actually, just go to the <coughs> go down one, a couple more. So <coughs> went on that one. That's a little that's bit more, one. that's a little bit better, so. Um, <clears throat> so, a portion of Christensen Boulevard was platted with the Southdale Farms 3rd edition. A gap of approximately 450 feet was <coughs> not platted from 67th Street East to 66th Street. That's the lower box there in yellow. Um, the plat is attached to this memo if you'd like to take a look at that. Uh, during the design of 66th Street, the utility crossings were planned for Christensen Boulevard, were included in the design plans for 66th Street, but a, the portion of unplatted Christensen Boulevard does not have any utilities in there because it wasn't platted. We didn't have anything anywhere to put any pipe. We just <coughs> have the idea that that's where it's, where it's going to be going. So um, since the design of 66th Street, and now we've bid it and it's under construction, um, a master plan for the subdivision known as Willow Grove and a concept plan, Willow Grove is to, can you move over just to the east a little bit? So Willow Grove is the area right there above <coughs> the legend. And then if you go to the north, go to the next page. And then that's this area that I'm talking. So Willow Grove phase one is the area right there where the cursor is. Up to the north there is the area that um, we've seen a concept master plan on uh, for, for that area. Um, for these new developments to be serviced, to be developed and serviced with utilities, the sanitary sewer and the Christensen Boulevard gap will need to be installed. We have contacted Christians and companies who owns that land about obtaining a utility easement to allow for the construction of the sanitary sewer connection. Christians and companies has verbally agreed to grant the utility easement. We have that attached. Um, in order to construct the utility crossing, so we need to, in order to service those two areas that are being proposed, we have to at a minimum connect Christensen Boulevard. We have a 65th Avenue connection to the north that depending upon how the concept is laid out east of 66th Street. We would need that one as well. But we can drag 64th Avenue sewer from lift station 13 back to this area if we need to. But that's 
a significant distance and it's involving 64th Avenue and some of 66th Street. So um, in order to, to construct the utility crossing there at Christensen Boulevard and 66th Street, uh, dewatering wells were installed to lower the water level in the area. Uh, the water level was successfully lowered and the installation of the utility crossing is complete. Um, we got to talking about this at one of our construction meetings that this is probably the best time to finish that gap off since there's already work being done in that area. So the contractor on the 66th Street project has agreed to hold his pricing for what he did on 66th Street with an additional $200,000 for dewatering. So when we bid 66th Street, there was a dewatering um, item of some contractors of upwards of $400,000. So I think the $200,000 to dewater that that 750 foot stretch is pretty reasonable to be honest and they can do it so um, that brings the cost of the Christensen Boulevard crossing to around three hundred thousand dollars two hundred and seventy thousand in round numbers and the 65th Street crossing about seventy five thousand dollars so um, what I'm requesting is for you to consider adding these connections to the 66th Street projects. Um, with the increasing development in this area and the timing of all this, it just makes the most sense to be out in front of some of these developments with this regional infrastructure. Um, one of the questions that I did receive from some people, some, one question I did receive was, who would be assessed for this additional cost? That was my first question. Yep. And uh, the areas that I outlined east of 66th Street would be those who would get assessed, would be assessed for it. They're within the original boundary of the district. So I don't know if you want to go. The, could you just explain that? Yep. Area? So the two areas that I highlight identified. So the Willow Grove. Willow Grove and, the and then that Grove. area that to the north there. The green. Yep. Those two areas. So it would be a, a larger area than that. But those two for for sure. So it's just new development. It's just yeah. it's just tacking on more expense for the this this assessment district. Yeah. And okay. like I said earlier, we need that sewer connection in there to service these these developments if it were otherwise it just doesn't happen and they're also picking up part of that dewatering cost. yes I would say yes all of that because everybody else is in the green there that's Southdale Farms first second third fourth and fifth fourth and sixth and sixth <laughs> we all have their local local assessments so okay. this would just be on for those so um, had that right away been dedicated in the beginning we would have installed it as part of this project but it wasn't I don't think that Christians do what they wanted to do yet, but they kind of, or f their hand is kind of forced with Christians Boulevard, but they just didn't want to plat it yet. So all we've requested from them is an easement to get this deep sewer through the sand vein in and and done. And so I'm sorry, just just so that I'm clear, yeah. the the green area is the assessment district. No, the assessment but district is like a mile each way, so it's from from 17. The veterans, okay. 64. And are there existing homes within that there are, assessment district already? But, yes, there are. And those would only be assessed for the region, the street. The sewer is specific to this area. Everybody mm -hmm. in the district has has that. They so the only some. people that are going to be assessed for this are, it, it's new development land, I guess is what I'm getting at. I just want to make sure we're very clear if, if, if there's existing residents that are going to be taking a hit on this site. Okay. <laughs> No, because everybody shown in green up there okay. is existing South Hill Farms. They okay. all flow to lift station 10, which is south of Christmas Boulevard. Yep. It's on one of those lots. Okay. So in order for the areas in the other color east of 66, mm -hmm. they would need that chunk in there. The other people, the other existing residents don't need that. They function without it. Okay. But they would get an assessment from the project for 66th Street as a regional collector street. That's been decided years ago. So this verbal agreement though, what exactly is in this verbal agreement just so that we are aware? So what it, what it is is um, keeping the bid prices for 66th, adding that $200,000 for dewatering, and then I'll bring you a change order. I didn't get a chance to have a yes. change order prepared. But I want this is important enough where I wanted to get it in front of you guys, get your blessing on it, and then I'll bring a change order back to okay. you. So what it on the attachment, I don't know if you were able to see that or not, but there's a cost estimate. So for the Christensen Boulevard one, 
everything stays the same for cost according to 66th Street except for the dewatering. And I guess there's a little lab testing lab services. And then for 65th Street, it would be 75,000 for, for that one. Okay, no questions? I, I don't think so. So you just want a blessing on it then, Jim? Blessing on back. this work, yeah, on this portion of it. And then I'll come back and formalize it with a, with a change order. Okay. I just, um, like I said, it was important enough that I wanted to get it out in front of you guys sooner than later. Seems to me like it's just got to get done, so I don't know if there's much options here. Okay. It doesn't concern you that this is a verbal agreement? He's going to bring a change order. Okay. Be if you're not concerned, then I'm not concerned. <laughs> That'll be in writing. I'm looking right here. So. <laughs> no, he's going to bring a change order. That's That'll be in writing. Okay. It'll be under right. the terms of the original construction agreement. Okay. I'll make that motion. <laughs> okay. Jeff makes a motion. Can I get a second? I'll second. Stephanie has a second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, Jimmy, got some. Mr. Mayor, Council, Water, Sewer, Storm, and Street Improvement District 2022 6 and 2022 7. We have change order number three. Change order number three is for an increase of $45,293.28. Um, the uh, breakdown for this one is there was a cost increase for some HDPE polyethylene pipe lowerings. Uh, when we bid this project, there was PVC, polyvinyl chloride pipe, lowerings with ductile iron fittings. Uh, over the winter, the Cast World, this is in their service area, had met with some reps <coughs> about fusing high-density polyethylene pipe, HDPE, eliminating the joints, and that is what they are preferring now. So we had some cost increases to go with HDPE versus PVC uh, pipe. There's some plan sheets in here for that. Um, there's some uh, cost proposal for correspondence for lift station, electrical service to the lift station, that is, um, let me get to this. Okay. So the electrical plans for Southdale Farms 4th Edition indicated a two-wire feeder with a ground wire from the electrical feed point to the lift station controller. For the sump pump lift station, the station controller will require a three-wire feeder with ground wire. Contractors requested to provide cost proposal will provide the additional number four copper neutral conductor to meet this requirement. Uh, this is a $1,300 change uh, increase with 5% contractor markup. Uh, there's a borrow reduction for lot grading after the project was bid and awarded. The developer requested a slight modification to the proposed grading of the lots. Not as extreme as Arrowwood Third, but a slight modification. Um, instead of grading from a 2% to the back curb, they dropped down to 1%, I believe, is what it was. So there was a reduction in quantity for that. And then we had the bid, bid uh, water service lowering on here. And the contract extension, final completion extend the contract to we had a completion date of July 15th and final of August 15th contractor oh, hold on oh from July 15th to August 15th just to make sure that everything everything gets done so um, that's correspondence is attached to this change order so there's a lot of information on it but the nuts and bolts of it is it's an additional $45,293.28 so um, this change order has been vetted by our staff, gone back and forth, negotiated. So I think it's pretty, pretty, um, pretty reasonable change order. So we have to do that. We have to change the piping. Yes. But can you tell me why again? Because this understand. is in the Casper Water Service Area. Okay. The agreement with Casper is that the city builds the infrastructure, pays for the infrastructure, and then Casper buys the infrastructure and maintains it for the future. And that's what they want. That's what they want. Why yep. didn't they tell us that earlier? Because this is something new that they didn't know that was available until this winter. Okay. So it's it's got to do with the, the fittings and the <coughs> seat and the polyethylene. So. Okay. Anything else on this one? I have no questions. No, I guess if we have to do it, I'll just uh, make a motion. Okay. <laughs> Make a motion for a change order number three for street ID number 2022-6 and 2022-7. Good. Good, Jim. Thanks. I'll second. 
Okay, Stephanie is a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Jim, you got the next one too here. So we saved the best one for last. <laughs> what we have here is Sewer Improvement District 21-6 20, lift station SA-13. What we have now is a change order in the negative amount oh. of $18,097. Oh, so this is a balancing contract, a balance, contract balancing change order. Um, it, it balances the construction contract with the as constructed quantities. So um, like I said, it's a negative amount of $18,097. I'll make that motion. Oh, thanks, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff makes a motion I'll on A. Stephanie does a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. And then we B. have the uh, final review and acceptance. Um, <coughs> Public Works has gone through the project, and we've gone through the project, so we have a final review and acceptance form. Just basically states that the project was complete, uh, and the one year warranty period starts on August 7th of 2023. So. Uh, this just is a paper trail to keep everyone honest when something goes wrong in that year. So there's no outstanding work or anything like that. It's everything is done. You promised. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> no yes, it's warranty evidence. <coughs> okay. So maybe any other uh, questions? I don't necessarily know if you need to have a motion and an acceptance on this, but since it does say action, you might as well, I guess, to accept the final acceptancing and. Uh, the final review and acceptance. Okay, Jeff makes the motion. Can I get a second? I'll second. Stephanie has a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Brent, you got the next one, I guess. Okay, this one's just a touch base with the council in regards to floodplain permits. Uh, as you may recall, floodplain permits right now come to the council on consent agenda. Um, we don't give any approval at the staff level of a floodplain permit until council is approved either through consent agenda or regular items. Uh, in conversations our staff have discussed with the state and FEMA, they're going to start. They're going to be pushing us to require more floodplain permits for things even as simple as planting a tree, for example. If you're in the floodplain, yeah, it's crazy. And in order to say keep things to be able to keep moving timely and to save you guys from having to review many floodplain permits if the state pushes us harder of having to do that we ask that we could approve them at the staff level if we see a concern or conflict or something that we need to bring to the council's attention saying hey that's a bigger deal we want your concurrence on this then we would bring those items to you but to save you the hassle of all, you know, more of just the simple type items. Um, overall, like I said, just trying to say, keep things moving and be able to bring, save you guys from having to have many floodplain permits if the state pushes us harder on doing that, requiring that, so. I have no problem doing that. I'm trying to figure out the, the whole point of those permits was to Keep track of what's altering the floodplain. I don't yes. think planting a tree is altering the floodplain. Jim, you remember that? <laughs> we are scratching our heads. <laughs> I, mean, I have no problem with Remember who we're dealing with here. Okay. Oh, seriously, we were scratching our heads going, really? A permit for a tree? I know you asked wow. me to get a permit to put gravel in my driveway, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I have no problem letting staff approve yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, if it's something that is we're not sure of or we're going to know all this needs to be a council discussion, we would probably say no. We're going to bring this to council because okay. you want to be the Are these just written here. applications for people, or like if somebody was going to plant a tree, do they have to pay for the flood? No, it's currently we do not charge okay. for the floodplain right. permits. Just curious. Uh, and most of the floodplain permits over the last couple of years have been really tied to diversion related issues, and that was the main driver. And we were trying to pay attention to how much time we're we putting into it, yeah. and then to turn come back to council later on, going okay if it is time consuming then we would propose a fee but we are we're not charging a fee for it so okay we'll make that motion okay Jeff makes a motion second. Yes. <coughs> now there's a second all right all in favor say aye aye all right motion carries paul you got one here yes one yeah uh, mr mayor and members of council uh the city of horace is requesting approval of special events permits for the following horace liquor license holders 
uh, the Grove Coffee and Bar, Big Herbs Bar, the Headquarters Bar and Grill. Uh, the special events permits coincide with the annual Horace Bean Day celebration, which is coming up here the 17th through the 20th here in Horace. Uh, all three businesses will have the opportunity to sell food and alcohol beverages at a variety of events throughout the weekend, including Horace 150th Anniversary Dinner, Bean Day's Car Show, Bean Day's Food and Vendor Fair, and the Bean Day's Street Dance. Uh, as I mentioned, all events will take place between Friday, August 17th, and August 19th, technically. Uh, all three entities plan to only serve those who have been properly identified and wristbanded. Uh, we as the city believe that this is that allowing liquor license holders to sell and serve alcoholic beverages instead of allowing attendees to bring their own coolers, which has been done in the past. Uh, this is a much safer practice and will assist in ensuring no one of your age is served. Thanks for the consideration of these three permits. Um, and also, as a side note, the city is also working <coughs> with Horace Fire. Uh, um, the federal workshop is already taking place, and we are working to ensure all safety concerns and precautions are observed. Great. So, Paul, the first night of the the, the uh, permit, that is Thursday night, though, because we're doing it at the senior center, right? Yes. Okay. That was just you, yes. you said Friday, so I'm just double checking here. Okay. <clears throat> I'll make. Oh, it's me. Any other questions? No, I'm good. Okay, so we want to make a motion. <coughs> accept. I'll make a motion to uh, approve all of these special event permits. Okay. We get a second. Second. A second. Pardon. Yeah. Oh, we're good. Okay, so we got a first and a second. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Could have put you them guys. earlier in the agenda <laughs> so they didn't get to <laughs> sit here. Yeah, they've been sitting here all night. <laughs> <laughs> two, two hours like in. <laughs> well, at least I know Big Herbs is still open if we're uh, Thank you guys. Uh, in thank you guys for coming for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's educational. Council, <laughs> may I approach? Please. May I approach the bench, Your Honor? Go no, ahead. Just kidding. Um, uh, one thing that I did want to note is um, we've been struggling to get confirmation on the insurance policy for the events um, due to the fact that they are being held on private property this year. Um, there will need to be an um, insured listed um, as Eno Enterprises and the Grove Coffee and Wine. Um, and then, which leads me to my second question, and this is for council to check with their insured, um, would be how does that work for having multiple liquor licenses on one property. I'll have to talk to my people. <laughs> <laughs> Your people go ahead and talk to. But I just wanted to bring those up because it is a concern. Um, I've visited with Sherry, you know, um, it is a concern for them being the property owners, um, knowing that they're going to have different bars serving different places and how do we combat being overserved and you know, obviously we've talked about the private company is going to be doing the wristbands, so that takes that portion onto the security company, but just being able to figure out whose liability it is because I don't want to be responsible for somebody that got overserved at someone else's bar. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so no, understood. Just wanted to bring that up and ask the question if we can get confirmation on those um, yep. and find out, like, how we handle that. Okay. Right. We'll Sounds check into it there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Jimmy, I'm going to move to 21 then. All right. We'll do a quick little run through of the construction projects. Um, we'll just start on the top of my pile and work our way to the bottom of the pile. Mm -hmm. So you should have a copy of all of these in your attachment, so I won't spend a whole lot of time on them unless something does strike you. Uh, first thing we have is the multimodal improvements. These are the uh, sidewalk and pedestrian facility improvements near the senior center along food court and center. Uh, they haven't started those yet. It's a lot of striping and some other little curb and gutter stuff. So uh, this project is a DOT project. It is tied with the shared use path along the northeast corner of the roundabout. I don't know if you saw the lake that that created over the weekend, but they were all <laughs> pumping today. The fill has been brought in and they have to put the, uh, um, put, there's some storm sewer piping, they have to put that in and then concrete payment on that. So when Op Construction does the concrete on the shared use path, they'll be down doing the work along the senior center. So um, all these contractors have been notified of bean days here in two weeks, so um, they don't have any anything going on there. So Thel Farms fourth edition 
has been open to developers and home builders, so that keeps moving along. We've got one lingering punch list item that's going to be completed this fall just due to the water in the ponds. It was pretty decent, and then it rained, so the ponds filled back up. So they'll have to wait and pump those out towards the end of the year. The fifth edition, curb and gutter done, pavement's done, topsoiling is done, um, the electrical work, electrical work remains. Uh, that one they've got uh, just um, just a little bit more left to be done on that. The pocket park is complete. I don't know if you've been able to go up there. The park has solicited a vendor for playground equipment, so the park that's by the pond will have playground equipment by the end of the year. So they are moving ahead on that. 66th Street has been making some pretty good progress here in the last in the last week. Uh, like I said, the utility crossings at 66th Street, the challenging utility crossings at 66th Street through the sand vein have been installed. Um, concrete paving is scheduled for the end of the week or middle to the end of the week that would due to the heat and some other stuff uh, all finished was having some difficulty getting their paver from Grand Forks down here just because it's a overweight and over oversized permit so but they should be in here the middle of the week and they continue uh, working on on that so uh, Wall Avenue East has kind of been slow. <coughs> We've been some utility relocations and some and an easement for ingress and egress out of the orchard. We believe we've got that solved now, so they're planning on coming back as of uh, coming back on Wednesday. So I do I do just have a couple a couple questions? Sure. Do you, Do you have any concerns on the pace of work or the time frame? Still, are we good? I I'm not too concerned about that one. It's a relatively simple project, and from what we're told, there'll be two crews coming back in when they start. Okay. So it's um, there's no under there's no real underground there's no sewer there's no water there's storm sewer, which isn't very deep so that goes relatively quickly and then there's the grading the base and the and the okay. put the street together so I'm I'm not too concerned with it okay. with it yet. And then I don't know if this is a timely topic but has the um, entrance and exit to the orchard? Um, I, I mean, do they know yet how? many days it's going to maybe be shut down what that's going to look like uh, for the residents no that's something that we did i did talk to the project manager this morning at our staff meeting and i'll see he was going to okay. reach out to them and see if we can't get some because some i mean just depending on the time frame i just want to make sure that my neighbors uh we all are understanding what that's going to look like right. and and have that planned out so okay that's still in the yeah, works we, of we conversation talked about bringing okay. paul in here and getting some getting some notice out Obviously, okay. some good notice on on that. Is it still a ways away that, that um, we can get to that point, or probably next week? Of closure? Probably. I think I said I need to figure that out for sure. Oh. So, plan I, for I mean, the are next. We, are we talking closure for just a few days for the entrance and exit area, or? So, until the concrete paving, yes, a few days to okay. get the storm sewer and the crossing in. Then they're going to keep going with the storm sewer and then come with the street. And when the street, I don't know how they're going to do it, if they're going to do it east to west or west to east. Okay. How, how that's all going to okay. how that's all going to work out. Well, so. maybe if I could be a part of the conversations and when it gets to that so we can make sure we do good communication. I mean, that's, sure. just, that's a really big uh, part of that project. Yeah. Okay. Yep, well, that makes sense. Uh, Maple Lake Estates Edition, they got the curb and gutter in last week. Paving is scheduled for tomorrow. I didn't get a chance to go this afternoon. Is there water standing around out there, Jeff? I didn't look. I don't think so because it was graded, graded, and they've got drain tile in there. So, um, if that is the case, I think it'll take them a couple of days to pave it. So by the end of the week, they should have it all paved. And I will remind our I'll staff. I'll let you know when the trucks go by my house. Oh, that's <laughs> can't go by my house. If there's a gate up. But I will uh, make sure to remind them that. Uh, <laughs> I thought that gate was down. Is it down? No. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Anyways, I'll remind, make sure to remind them of the uh, patch on Burgundy they have to do. So they'll uh, also have to patch 72nd Street. Yes. That, uh, where I shouldn't say patch, but fix the yes. gravel road there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cub Creek Second Edition. Uh, they made some pretty good progress on that one in the last month. Um, there is an interim completion date of September 21st for basically everything uh, west of the Drain 27. Aside from 83rd Avenue, um, we're feeling pretty, <coughs> pretty confident. Their gauge had a little over four inches of rain in it, so they spent today moving water and pumping water. Wall Avenue West, um, they're moving along. 
they've run into some challenges with utilities. Brenton mentioned about utility corridors. There was a gas line that was in their way that they had to work around. We found some utility crossing conflicts. Um, the pipe wasn't as deep as the rural water had thought, so there was some some slowdown on that one. This one, there is some concern about getting it done by the completion date. They well, can get it. They can get it paved. They said we had a little meeting this morning on this one. They can at least get and it paved. Get it paved. They'll they'll get it paved. He said, but it might not be by the 14th. It might be by the end of September. They don't know how it's all going to shake out okay. yet. So. They figure out that sewer line, water line issue they were talking about? That's, before. yes. We, so we've been reading with Casparo. This is their system as well. Mm -hmm. And we've got three service lines that need to be lowered. And then there's a um, line to the south in Westbrook that needs to be okay. that needs to be relocated. So taking care of, of that one. Arrowwood 3rd Edition is about 96.3% complete, believe it or not. If you drive by the war zone, there's some shaping and some final grading that needs to be done around around that one but for the most part they are done with what they've got so um, a plea from public works to route your sump pumps outside of your house uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, I got a note from Fargo today that the meter vault at Deer Creek spiked and uh, guess when it started raining I suppose following the inundation of the rain yeah so if you look there's a 16 hour period there <laughs> that's pretty obvious when it well, started I mean, to can, rain. You can drive around and see where you know, there's just there's no hoses out of the front. Yeah. So um, this kind of leads to the other uh, topic we've talked about before is the connection to Fargo, obviously. You can see here the capacity of that connection is 800 gallons per minute, and we hover sl slightly below 200 gallons per minute, but it shot up yeah. over that, that, uh, that rain event. So... Um, I was that was tell Fargo were flushing the pipe. Fargo was a little bit worried about that. He <laughs> said uh, they like the revenue, but um, II might be something that you want to cut down on some of that. Yeah. So open basements, sump pumps, and that. So, do you think it was? I mean, maybe this is a dumb question, but it, is it just the fact that it was such a large rain event? People aren't normally venting their sump pumps outside at this time of year. We it's like a spring thing. It should be. No, they're supposed or to they be. should be. Everybody yeah. should be You're outside. Wrong. Do you think people just aren't doing it? Yes, I'm gonna say yes. We have a lot they of just, people that do they not. Just, they're just not doing it. But yeah. Either maybe they need to be educated, education on it, or, or maybe just, they don't like the hose in their yard. Yeah. 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 Most of the new neighborhoods were giving them some pump hookups too, and a lot of we're getting a lot of fight from contractors on hooking those up because it is an additional cost. Oh yeah. Um, it is something that we should look at requiring for new developments that it okay. is hooked up. Put it on mm -hmm. the list. So when I requested something in the graphic form from Fargo, they said gladly. <laughs> Send me this. <laughs> so, anyways, um, the other one is construction, the new construction, like you said, open basements. Yep. Within an hour of the rain starting, I can watch all the stations in the new area. Just go crazy. Just yeah. Shoot up and nonstop. Mm -hmm. That's what happened well, in Lost River there that one year. It, it isn't just one area either. It's no, yeah. It's multiple this areas. this it's problem with sump pumps is. Everywhere. Everywhere. It's, you know, we've been dealing with the Chestnut Ironwood. You deal with it anywhere with somebody has campaign. a sump pump. Yeah. Adam, you should take me to a lift station once so I can see what the heck you're even talking about. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Take the number between 1 and 20. <laughs> <laughs> Eight. Is that it? Okay. No. For lift stations or for what I've got? Um, last thing that I'll leave you with is the connection <laughs> to Cass Rural. That's what I was going to ask. Um, we've been working for, for two weeks here, uh, flushing the main, flushing the line between the tower and the meter vault, and there's been some, some failing tests as far as um, they have to have a bacteria test taken and passed. Um, there has been four tests taken, numerous flushing, and it still fails. So they flushed it harder today. Uh, this line is regulated by Casparo. So the amount of flow that goes through it, they provide it. Today they were able to boost up to 800 gallons a minute to try to flush that out because this is an ongoing problem. It's been a week. So we're not sure where, where it's, how come it's failing. It could be as simple as there's too much chlorine in the water. Um, it could be where there's a reagent in the bottles that you have to take sampling that kills the chlorine or that takes out the chlorine. If that is not right, it will throw a false positive. So um, last 
or worst case scenario is digging down to the pipe, putting on a surface saddle and taking a test off of that because right now it's being taken off a fire hydrant and there's some concern as if, you know, bet, making sure that the whole nozzle is So is you did the big flush today? They, the Casper Oil was able to give the city 800 gallons per minute. So just, just, on, just on the line coming from Casper Oil to the tower. Did they Kay. test today then? Yes. And it's, it's a 24 hour test. Oh. That's the problem. So you mm -hmm. take a test, take it to the water treatment plant, 24 hours, and then you know the results. So okay. you know the results. Everything is ready to go. Can you text me when you yeah. know the result? Yeah. Because I'm chomping at the bit. Yeah. So <laughs> we met last Monday yes. with the DEQ. They were good with the plan for um, converting over. Uh, it's going to be turn the valves off at the water treatment plant, turn the valves off at the well, turn the valve on at the meter vault, oh, and at the rate that Horace is using water right now, should be within a day or two days where the water will be flushed through the system. Do we need to remind residents of the turnover procedure and what they should do on their end? So, the which turnover? we have done, have we, we not? Have done okay. Times. Yeah, there's been, oh, there good. was a 30 yeah, day public going. notice put out okay. as a change in a water source. Okay. And then, given that the city's using about 270,000 gallons a day yeah, and the well. tower is only 75, 50,000 gallons, 75,000 75, gallons, okay. it, it turns over pretty quickly. Okay. So, good. the state wasn't very worried about that. There was some thoughts where we might have to do a complete flush, an entire hard flush of the city. Yeah. But they said with the no rate longer. of the water being used, okay. they don't, they don't foresee Great. that. So, anything I missed? I don't think so. Just think. Kind of run the game. I am. I'm, I'm going around town right now. Yeah. Go south to north and west to east. Keeps the pages up. Keep the pages north. <laughs> Lots of things. Going once, going twice. Going three times is old. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll ask you privately if something comes up. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Brenton. Okay. A couple items I have for you uh, for council in North Dakota League of Cities Conference is September 20th to, through the 22nd in Bismarck. If you'd like to attend, please let me know so I could get logistics worked out for that. Um, Special Assessment Commission is meeting next week on August 14th at 6 p.m., so Monday. By 14, 6 p.m. here at the fire hall. Uh, the districts they're going over are Lakeview, Terry Gardens Third, Arrowhead Third, and Southdale Third. Okay. So, uh, liars have been sent to those. Is this like meeting number two on those properties? This is the public. The public. This the, will be the public objection hearing. hearing. So, if anybody okay. wants to object to the special assessment commission, it's this meeting. Uh, it's this, okay. this meeting. Okay. The following, then that group will make a recommendation for the city council. Uh, and then we'll have an objection hearing set for the city council for folks that if they want to object they could do so and then council would take action on that the assessments for those districts okay. so, um, but like I said August 14th so next Monday is the objection hearing for that what um, I'm sorry what which projects were in that it would be Lakeview, Terry Gardens 3rd, Arrowhead 3rd, and Southdale 3rd. Thank you. Yep. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't yep. miss that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, also, just a reminder for everybody, as everybody knows, but uh, next Tuesday is that recall election from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. here at the fire hall. We'll, we have information about absentee ballot on our website or on Facebook. I know we've been sharing that uh, because we have been getting asked questions about that. So we're making sure that that information is out there. Uh, we will have a post later this week just making sure people know the times and uh, just keeping it pretty, pretty short and sweet or to the point. Um, and then the last item I have is something for council to start thinking about. We're not asking for any action anytime soon on this, but probably in the next few months, uh, we'll be needing to come up with, or approach council with discussion about renaming County Road 17 and Horse. Mm -hmm. Cheyenne Street is already taken. So mm -hmm. continue to name Cheyenne from West Fargo down mm. wouldn't work probably as easy because we already have a Cheyenne street in horse so 
please think about that and your ideas on that uh, because that will be a conversation that we'll need to be having here not next month or so but you know, I just want to make sure you're aware of it because it will probably be a bigger topic mm -hmm. for the community so everybody knows it's County Road 17 but it won't be County Road 17 once we take ownership of the road I'm assuming that would be at some point next year after the county has completed their uh, mill and overlay work and some other you know maintenance type work on the road so uh, and they anticipate to be doing that next year if I remember yep so last indications are from them on that so yeah. okay that's all I had okay well it's for me I got you pretty much cleaned out my list which is good just a couple of things uh, one of the guys that's lived around town here for a long long time Neil Nelson passed away here last week which was kind of sad uh, 86 years old uh, he know he knew everybody did a lot of things I think one of the things that I <laughs> about him was he was the milk guy back in the 40s and 50s and he was the only one who had diplomatic immunity to go on both sides of the road because on one side you had the uh, Scandinavians you had the French on the other side and you did not cross that road <laughs> that was a demarcation line but uh, Neil had diplomatic immunity so uh, sad it was passing but uh, he's he had a lot of great stories. Um, the other one I was just going to mention too, uh, there's a uh, Eagle Scout project where uh, a fellow is going through and redoing all these tiny libraries that we had at the different parks. Um, he's going to put some different doors on them so they are not so subjective to the wind um, and wet. So they're going to re-put those back together again and hopefully they don't get vandalized again, but uh, he's going to give it his best effort. So those should be up here, I'm hoping in another week or so. so. Just passing that along. Sarah's not here. Naomi, what do you got? Um, just been doing my planning and zoning meetings with Jace, and I don't know, we met last week, and we did talk about County 17 needing to change eventually um, once we take over that road. Uh, we talked about some variances that are probably going to be coming our way. Um, I have a meeting set up with Mr. Dabbert and Bryce Johnson with the Home Builders Association tomorrow. Um, so, looking forward to that conversation. Should be good. And then I have to use my phone because I need to look at a note. Um, Jim and Breton mm -hmm. and probably Jace. Um, if we could set up a meeting for Thursday morning between us <clears throat> and uh, Mr. Dwyer, if that would work. It has to be right away in the morning. Okay. How about Friday? Either Thursday or Friday, whatever works better we, for you. We could try to coordinate with you. Okay. Let's uh, let's get that scheduled. Um, it does need to be this week, and Jim, you have to be there. That's all I have. Okay, Stephanie. Uh, we've been hard at work on the Horse 150th. Paul's been continuing to knock it out of the park. We've had a lot of good committee uh, meetings, and we're getting ready for a great a great city celebration. So, and that has been consuming my extra time, and that is all I have. Okay. Um, I don't have a whole lot. I uh, just had one Metropod meeting uh, today, earlier today. Um, there wasn't a lot discussed that is of importance here. Uh, other than that, um, I have not heard any updates uh, from Brenton as far as if you got a hold of Corey, uh, if you are going to have another round of interviews or not. Um, yep. And you, you just have that scheduled. I think it just got scheduled today. today. For Wednesday? Two? Okay. What's, what's it for? So it just happened to here today for a receptionist position. Oh, 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 okay. Another hand, that's all I got. Okay. So I will make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Jeff makes a motion. Can I get a second? I will second. Stephanie makes a second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 We're done.